In this video, we'll be comparing the Security Plus certification against the Security Plus certification. And that's because we'll be looking at the latest refresh of the course to see what's different. Every three years, CompTIA Security Plus gets updated to meet the needs of the industry to ensure that the IT professionals have the relevant skills that are necessary for today's cybersecurity jobs. So the previous course was SY0601 and the new refreshed course is 701. So I'll be comparing against both just so you know exactly what's different and which one you should go for as the 601 is still available to take till mid next year 2024. But before we get into that, let's look at CompTIA who are one of the world's leading IT trade associations that have worldwide recognition. They were founded in 1993 and they're a leader for vendor neutral certifications and they've issued to date over 2 million of them. In terms of what certifications they have in their portfolio, there is a lot. But for beginners, it's mainly this trio that you see on the screen here. They have the A+, the Network+, and the Security+. Now the A+, and Network+, are often seen as prerequisites for the Security+. However, these are not official prerequisites, meaning you can still go for the Security+, without having taken any other certifications. This is just a recommendation and some foundational knowledge they recommend you have before going into the Security Plus. However, like I said, it's not required, so you can go in without any prior knowledge, just pure revision for Security Plus. And if you're interested on other videos for this, I've also created previous ones comparing these. So do check that out after this video. Now let's jump straight into comparing 601 and 701. We'll first start off with looking at the exam format and look at how the difference is for both exams. So you can see the length of the exam has not changed. They both stand at 90 minutes. And in terms of number of questions, they are both again at 90. And the item format, they both have multiple choice and performance based questions. So just for anyone that doesn't know, performance based questions are just basically questions that test your ability to solve problems in real world settings and they can do them as simulations or within virtual environments. They're basically a way to just test that you actually know what you're talking about by giving you a realistic scenario. Then in terms of passing grade, they both have the exact same with 750 on a scale to 100 to 900. And in terms of release date, this is where they slightly differ of course. The 601 course was released 12th of November 2020, whereas 701 was released November 7th, 2023. So you can see they are three years apart as the course refreshes every three years. The testing providers are again exactly the same with Pearson View. So you can see in terms of exam format, everything is pretty much the exact same as before. Not much tends to change every three years in terms of the exam format. It's just more of the topics. However, it is worth noting that you can still take the 01 course until July 2024, which is why I'm doing this video so you can see exactly which one you should be going for as you have the option of two at this moment of time of recording the video. So now onto the topics. We'll start with 601, have a look at the modules and their weighting, and then compare them against 701. So first up, we have attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities, which carries a weighting of 24%. Here, you'll learn to compare and contrast different types of social engineering techniques like phishing or smishing. And you'll also look at determining types of attacks like application attacks, network attacks, just like wireless attacks like blue snarfing and evil twin. Then you'll also look at the explaining techniques used in penetration testing and security concerns associated with various types of vulnerabilities. So quite a heavy topic there. Next up, you'll then look at architecture and design, which is weighted at slightly less, 21%. And in this topic, you'll look to explain the importance of security concepts in an enterprise environment. You'll also summarize virtualization and cloud computing concepts like software as a service, which is getting really popular nowadays. You'll also then summarize secure application development, deployment and automation concepts. And then you'll also look at the basic cryptographic concepts like salting and hashing. That covers that module. And then after that, you'll have implementation, which has a weighting of 25%. Within this, you'll look at implementing secure protocols like DNS, SSH, 
and secure network designs like Zero Trust. You'll also look at implementing public key infrastructure or even secure mobile solutions. So quite an important topic. Next up, we then have operations and incident response, which is a weighting of 16%. This is where you'll learn to find the appropriate tools to assess organizational security. You'll look at using things like Nmap, Netstat, Traceroute and many others. You'll also then look to summarize the importance of policies, processes and procedures for incident response and key aspects of digital forensics. After this topic, you'll then finally cover governance, risk and compliance, which is weighted at 14%. In this topic, you'll look to explain the importance of applicable regulations, standards or frameworks that can impact an organisational security posture, so things like GDPR. You'll start to summarise risk management processes and concepts and look to explain privacy and sensitive data concepts in relation to security. So that overall covers the modules and their weighting in 601. Let's now have a look at how this compares against 701, which is the latest refresh. Again, we'll do the same and go through them one by one. So starting off, we first have general security concepts. So you can already see that this was not a module on 601. And now for 701, it's currently weighted at 12%, which is the lowest that we've ever seen compared to any of the 601 modules. So it does have the same number of domains. It has five again, just like 601 but it's mainly changed due to a more focused and maturing industry in cybersecurity. So they've looked at where the future is heading for cybersecurity and changed it up and renamed specific domains. So within general security concepts, it'll include various types of security controls, fundamental security concepts, and the importance of change management processes and using cryptographic solutions. So you did see cryptographic solutions uh, in a previous domain in 601. So you can see it's just slightly moved around. Then next up, we have threats, vulnerabilities and mitigations, which is weighted at 22%. This will include things like threat actors and their motivations, threat vectors and attack services, different types of vulnerabilities, mitigation techniques and indicators of malicious activity. So a really heavy topic. Then that's followed by security architecture, which is weighted at 18%. So you can see before it was architecture and design and now that's changed just to security architecture. Within this one, you'll look at security implications of different architecture models, concepts and strategies that you'll use to protect data. You'll also look at security principles to secure enterprise infrastructure and the importance of resilience and recovery in security architecture. Then after that topic, you'll have security operations, which is weighted at 28%. This includes security techniques, security alerting and monitoring concepts and tools. You'll also look at vulnerability management activities and security implications of hardware, software and data asset management. You'll also look at identity and access management, as well as the importance of automation and incident response activities which then leads us on to the final domain, which is security program management and oversight, which is weighted at 20%. This will include elements of effective security governance, the risk management process, which can also include third party risk assessment and different types and purposes of audits and assessments. Overall, following up with security awareness practices and the elements of effective security compliance. So that covers all the modules for 701 and their weighting. So you can see when comparing these side by side, the highest weighted topics are for 601 implementation and for 701 security operations. Security operations takes the highest number overall compared to anything that they've had at 28%. And you can see that that's where they're looking to put more focus on. There wasn't a specific domain for security operations. However, that's now being created. So it's something you might want to consider in terms of what your knowledge or expertise is when you're deciding whether to go for 601 or 701. These are the type of things you'd want to be looking at. And now that you know what domains are involved in which refresh of the course, let's look at what specific type of jobs that you can get with Security Plus. So the certification itself will give you a powerful vote of confidence with employers. 
because just having the certification itself will attest to your abilities and your knowledge. They'll know exactly what knowledge you have if you've already passed the Security Plus test. And typically roles from this certification will be around managing an organization's security systems or policies. Or it could be something like implementing security solutions or monitoring security logs. So there's many different types of jobs. But just as an example, so you're aware, we have things like network or system administrator, security engineer or analyst, or even a network or cloud engineer. So like I said, it's not limited to these types of roles because I know plenty of people that have had the Security Plus certification but gone for something completely different to what's on the screen right now. This is just as a guide for if you're thinking of going for some of these, it's a certification you can consider. So now that you have all that information and you know the difference between both the courses, what exactly should you do and which one should you go for? Well, after reviewing the domains, you can see that they've all been slightly reworded and things have jumbled around slightly. The old 601 course does still provide the essential baseline knowledge and skills required for cybersecurity professionals, so it's not actually seen as out of date yet, and vouchers for the 601 are still valid through to July 31st, 2024, so you still have a long time that you can take the 601 course if it's something you've already prepped for. However, if you're looking towards the future and you want to gain the skills that are current and right now, I would highly recommend going for the 701. They refresh the course for a reason and you'll want to keep your skills up to date. You never know if you're going for a certification down the line, having the 701 course banked already might be a massive advantage. But that's not me saying doing the 601 or having the 601 is a disadvantage. It just depends on your current skills and knowledge and where you're looking to go in the future. Hopefully that's been really helpful for you and if it has, please do leave a like down below and also click the link to join my Discord where we discuss different types of certifications and you can also ask any questions that you have that might help you in your cybersecurity career.